Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about a very very important topic that is the asymptotic notations. Okay? So there are three types of asymptotic notations. The first one is the big O notation which we write down as this. The second one is the omega notation which is written as this and the third one is the theta notation which is written as this okay now what actually these are we'll study them one by one and they are used to find the complexity of the various algorithms that we used to solve various problems so let's talk about the big o notation okay suppose we have two functions one is f of n and the other function is g of n we say that f of n is the big o of g of n we say that f of n is the big o of g of n if and only if what what condition is being satisfied that f of n is less than equal to some constant c into g of n okay so if this condition is fulfilling we can say that a function f of n is the big o of function g of n okay and this n the values that will give us input to the functions will be greater than or equal to a particular n not n not will act as a lower limit okay so the n will always be greater than or equal to n not n is greater than or equal to n not okay so and if a function fn if this function fn is the big o of function gn then we can say that gn this is the upper bound for the function fn for fn or we can say on fn okay cool so the second we are going to study no first we can show it with the help of a graph okay suppose this is our graph and uh, this is n this is the function value suppose this is n not over here somewhere okay now this is my function random function f of n now after this particular value this function c has to be greater than f right so i'll give it as this and before this n n not it can be anything okay so this thing cool so this is about the big o notation now we will study about the theta notation yeah theta notation we say sorry this is the omega notation right yeah omega notation we say that a function fn is equal to the omega of function gn why when if and only if fn is greater than equal to some constant into g of n and the same condition will hold that we have an n not okay whose value n's value should be greater than equal to n not okay and obviously if uh, the function fn is the omega of function gn then gn will be termed as the lower bound on function fn okay we'll see this with the help of a graph so as we had done in the previous one this is the n not this goes for the n okay and suppose i have this random function f okay so where will my g n lie after this n not the g n has to be smaller than f n okay and before that obviously it can have any value okay now the next we are going to study about the theta notation yeah the theta notation lies somewhere between the omega notation and the big o notation that is we say a function f n is equal to the theta of function gn if and only if 
एफ एन लाइज बिटवीन सम कॉन्स्टेंट इंटू जी वन एंड सम अदर कॉन्स्टेंट इंटू जी सी टू ऑफ जी एन एंड ऑब्वियसली हेयर आई कैन राइट डाउन सी वन एंड सी टू आर सम कॉन्स्टेंट्स ओके एंड फॉर ऑल एन ग्रेटर दैन एन नॉट विच विल लैक्ट एज द लोअर लिमिट ओके सो इफ फंक्शन एफ एन इज इक्वल टू थीटा ऑफ फंक्शन जी एन देन जी एन इज नोन एज द टाइट बाउंड ऑन फंक्शन एफ एन इफ यू सी दिस विद हेल्प ऑफ अ ग्राफ आई होप यू कैन मेक द ग्राफ योर सेल्फ नाउ सो हैविंग अ वैल्यू एन नॉट एन ओके दिस इज अ रैंडम फंक्शन एफ एन आफ्टर दिस वैल्यू द फंक्शन C1 g of n is going to be smaller than f n, and the function c2 g of n will be greater than f n. Okay, you can say c2 g of n, c1 g of n. Okay, and here there will be any random functions. Okay, so we always find out the complexities in the theta notation. Why? Because we can always convert a function of a given omega notation or a big O notation to the given theta notation or to the theta notation. So we always find the complexities in the form of theta. In the next presentation, we are going to solve a question where we find the function g n from a given function f n. Okay. So see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.